if you are a fan of uh, psych, jazz, garage rock with like a Laurel Canyon choral singing vibe, the Death Valley Girls new one is really, really good. Check that out. Death Valley Girls. That one right there. Hey y'all, welcome back. Thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and I am ranking and reviewing every single Frank Zappa album released in his lifetime, and we are currently at number 29, Chunga's Revenge. If you're keeping track, this is the first of the Flo and Eddie albums to appear on this list. Um, we're more than halfway through, and Flo and Eddie finally make an appearance. Good for them. Um, and this is probably the least Flo and Eddie-ish of the Flo and Eddie albums, um, mainly because it is two instrumental tracks, um, which kind of date back to an earlier period of Zappa before Flo and Eddie, plus Flo and Eddie, the songs that they do appear on are, are pretty much self-contained songs that stand on their own really well. You know, they're not part of the, uh, the prolonged, you know, groupie routine with the hotels and the 200 motels things and all that stuff. They're just kind of standalone songs that work really well that I kind of wish Frank had kept around in his repertoire more than he did because I think they represent the best of Flo and Eddie. And as a side note, I believe there is a great Flo and Eddie album that exists if Frank had, have, instead of releasing four Flo and Eddie albums, had instead of diluting that material with lesser material he had just picked the best could have been they could have made one of frank's best albums ever um i might talk about that later not here um so anyways this was released in october of 1970 it is a single disc uh, one album two sides um it is mostly i think there's five songs that feature Flo and eddie um there's some live stuff that is really the only thing on this album that doesn't work there's a couple tracks that harken back to one track that harkens back specifically to the Hot Rat Sessions, another one that kind of reflects something that was going on earlier in 1970 before Flo and Eddie, um, and Frank kind of has all of them on the same album, but they work, and, and, I, and I think it works really well. Like, this is number 29, but this is still a really good album, and it's two of my all-time favorite Frank Zappa tracks in the guitar tracks, which are Transylvania Boogie, which opens the album, and Chunga's Revenge, which is right smack dab in the middle of side two. Um, the rest of the stuff is you get, like I said, these five Flo and Eddie songs. You get Road Ladies, which is a bluesy, jammy type number about being on the road. Um, you get Tell Me You Love Me, which is a straight up rocker with an incredible riff. The Steve Vai band would bring that back in the 80s and just destroy um, set list with that short, great punch in the gut type song. Oh, quick side note: the '88 band also brought back "Tell Me You Love Me." Tell Me You Love Me. Um, it is on Broadway, the Hard Way, the um, expanded CD version, um, and that is a um, "Why Don't You Like Me," which became a Michael Jackson parody song. Um, it's pretty funny. Um, it definitely doesn't have the same like metallic bite as this version in the Vi version. Um, the Vi version's also on You Can't Do That on Stage Anymore, Volume 1. Um, but yeah, uh, the 88 version did bring this back just as a side note. Broadway the hard way. Why don't you like me? Um, two kind of comic relief type, flow, very leaning heavy on Flo and Eddie type songs in Would You Go All The Way for the USA, um, which has some great George Duke trombone on it. And then Rudy Wants to Buy You as a Drink, which is about union um, and the union and musicians and working. And there's some more George Duke trombone on that, adding some just some great flavor to some of these tracks. And then the last track on the album, by far one of my favorite Frank Zappa songs, a great track, a great showcase for Flo and Eddie, is Charlena. Just a nice four-minute Charlena. No guitar solo, none of that stuff, just Charlena just a sincere track like this could should have been a pop hit it should have gone far it should have made the charts number one with a bullet it did not but just a phenomenal song um apart from that you have a song called the clap which is like a drum a written drum part i think performed by frank i don't think it's a duet i think it's frank playing the drum parts i know i could look that up um but it's mostly drums um it's and it kind of comes out of Chunga's Revenge and then heads off into the next number. 
Um, you get 20 small cigars, which sounds like I'm pretty sure was recorded in the Hot Rat Sessions. Um, it has that Hot Rats feel, kind of like the, the instrumental numbers that are on there um, on side two. Um, it has that sort of just quaint, sort of classical sounding, calmer type feel, a beautiful song, um, short little number, but just a great song. Um, and then you just have the one misstep on this album, which is called the Nancy and Mary music, which is from a 1970 Minneapolis show, which would eventually be released on Road Tapes venue number three, 1970 show. And essentially Frank took some of the improv and the solos and a drum solo from King Kong and Chungus Revenge, and he edited them together into this nine minute piece. The sound quality takes a hit. There's not really a logic behind the flowing of the jams. Um, there's some good moments in there, but it it doesn't work for me. It ruins the flow of the album, especially where it comes either the entire second half of side one or four songs in when you have this incredible momentum going. Um, so apart from that, like I love this album. Um, a lot of interesting little conceptual continuity clues with this. Um, Transylvania Boogie. So live, this would come right after Help, I'm a Rock. And I think... Listening to tapes of Help, I'm a Rock, it seems like they would play Help, I'm a Rock and the band would just kind of play that riff and Frank would start soloing. And it seems that after a couple solos, he kind of figured out this is the melody he liked to play. And then eventually he wrote this melody and he gave it to the horn players. So then they would play like these this, this melodic line and then Frank would solo and then they'd go back and play this other melodic line and then Frank would solo again. Um, you can hear that on Road Tapes venue number one, um, 68 show. Um, so you can hear an example of that on there. Um, but for this, it's just a guitar solo. So, and it, and Frank has taken those lines that he would have the horn players play and he's just incorporating it into his solo. So there are moments where it sounds like the band is like shifting gears and going into something else and Frank will reference those notes and then quickly abandon them and add his own flavor or go off soloing again. So he's essentially taken what sounded like a solo that evolved into something that was written and reduced it once again back to a solo. Um, and phenomenal solo, just like the everything about this, the drumming, the bass playing, the guitar, just a, a home run straight off the bat. Road Ladies is great. Lots of really good blues licks in there. 20 Small Cigars follows. Then you get the Nancy and Mary music, which kills it. But the Nancy and Mary music is from the Minneapolis 1970s show. In Road Ladies, there's this little improv section where they're talking about like groupies they had met or, or things. And I think it's Howie that goes, yeah, there was a time in Minneapolis. So Howie's referencing the show that would then be used to create the Nancy and Mary music in Road Ladies, which I think is a neat little, you know, Easter egg. Um, and then that's side one. Then side two is Tell Me You Love Me, phenomenal. Um, Would You Go All The Way, Chunga's Revenge, which is has an incredible Ian Underwood sax solo, great Frank solo. That finally kind of transitions into the clap, which is the drum. Then you get the uh, Rudy Wants To Buy You As A Drink, and then you finish with Charlena. But just a really strong album. Songs, Couple great guitar solos. One, mm, Nancy and Mary music, but there are some good moments in that. There's some like secret, not really secret word usage, but Frank conducting the band. There's a couple good solos in there. I think there's two Frank guitar solos in there. But again, I think it would have been better had either Frank provided the context of the songs. Um, they're from King Kong and Chunga's Revenge. He's exerted these parts and made this new thing, but you don't really hear the King Kong or you don't really hear the Chunga's Revenge. Um, I think it would have been better had you could have heard both. Um, but that's what you got. So anyways, I like it. First Flo and Eddie to make this. Still don't have a 1984 band on this list though. So that's still going to be in a couple, couple more numbers. And we got another Flo and Eddie coming up pretty soon. Probably not the one you think it's going to be. But anyways, that's it. Check out Chunga's Revenge. Let me know um, if you don't like the rest of the album or you like get into those songs, at least check out the opening Transylvania Boogie because the guitar playing is one of Frank's best and check out the Chunga's Revenge because those are just top tier Frank, Frank songs. Frank songs, 
top tier Frank songs along with Charlena. So yeah, three top tier songs here and then the rest are just really solid stuff. But yeah, Chunga's Revenge, number 29. Check it out. Let me know what you think about it. Have a good day, y'all. Take care. Peace.